Hello everyone, Bandit here. I have gotten a few comments asking how to download mods, so I'm going to go over the easiest way to download mods in 2024. So I'm going to be using Modrinth. Modrinth is a new open source mod manager for Minecraft, and it makes creating mod packs and downloading mods really, really easy and simple. So I'm going to show you how to install it today. First thing you'll need to do is come over to modrinth.com. The link for this will be in the description. Now to get this downloaded, come over to more and click the Get Modrinth app. It'll bring you to this page and you can click download. Once it's downloaded, open up the file, click yes, and it's just gonna walk you through the installation. You can keep everything as default here and finish. Now it should automatically open up after that. If it doesn't, you may have a desktop icon or you can search for it in the file explorer like so. So this is what it looks like when Modrinth first opens. The first thing you'll see is popular packs, so it's just advertised mod packs and advertised mods. But the first thing we need to do is log into Minecraft. So come up here to the little profile picture and click on it, and it says not signed in, so we're going to click this green login button. This will then ask you to put in your Minecraft credentials, so do that. And there we go, now I'm logged in, and you can see it has my username and my profile picture here. And also you can add multiple Minecraft accounts to this. So if you have an alt account, you can easily add it here and then switch between them at a click of a button. Now in Modrinth, the different packs are called instances. And to see your instances, you have to go to this library section here. Right now there is no instances, but we can create one. So you can either click this create new or come down to this green button down here and click create profile. But we'll click this. You have a few options, custom from file and import from launcher. For now, we're going to use custom. You can give it an icon. This is just the profile picture and give it a name. And this one, I'm going to use the latest Minecraft version just to show you how to create vanilla instances. So I will have vanilla selected and then I can select the game version. So you can see all of the different game versions for Minecraft. I'm just going to use 1.21.1. You can click show advanced and this will usually give more version options. So in this case, it lets you include snapshots However, we won't be using that. We'll just be using regular 1.21. Then I'll hit create. You can see it will start downloading Java automatically for you. It'll also start downloading all of the Minecraft files. And there we go, it's all downloaded. So now I can click on this instance. We can see there's a few things here, but the main thing that we care about right now is the play button. So let's hit that. Now, if you get some sort of error, in this case I am, it's most likely due to your Java installation or possibly any drivers. So make sure you have Java functioning correctly and any video drivers installed. The best way I can think of to fix it, if this is your first time downloading Minecraft, is to actually download Minecraft from the official website first and then use Modrinth. So if I go here to Minecraft.net and go to Get Minecraft, and now that I'm logged in, I can click on Download Launcher and download for Windows 10. So because the virtual machine uh, wasn't set up correctly with the drivers, I've gone back to my regular machine here and you can see my mod Rinth looks a little different. I have this jump back in section, which shows my different packs that I've created. So we'll go over here to library and here is all of the things that I have created. You can see some have profile pictures, some of them just random. As we saw before, you'll have an empty screen here, but we'll just wanna come down here and click create profile. Again, you can put in an icon if you really want to, give it a name and we'll do vanilla game version 1.21 and hit create. And there we go, it's done. And if we look in the list, here it is, Modrinth vanilla test. Now, if I click play on this guy and there we go, it's popping up Minecraft, the latest 1.21.1 and we can go through and set all of our options however we like. And before we get into actual modding, let's go into a few of the options here. So we have logs. This allows you to see the different logs of the run. So here it's showing the latest log from the last time we ran the game. This is useful for if you're downloading mods and some things start conflicting, you can go and look in the log here to see what exactly the problem is. The other thing we have here is options. This allows you to change the icon, change the name, it also allows you to edit the version, so you can come in here and directly change the Minecraft version if you want to. The rest of the stuff here is pretty advanced and you don't necessarily need to worry about it, so we're going to go back to the library page. When dealing with mod packs, there's a couple of different ways you can get them. You can either create your own, you can import them, 
or you can download an already created one. Well, let's talk about creating our own. We'll come down here to the create profile button. And again, we'll give it a name. Instead of vanilla, let's click forge for the loader. We'll then select our forge version. So we'll again, just do 1.21.1. Now, an important thing to note, Sometimes when you run mods with Forge, you'll get an error saying that the Forge version is not compatible with the mod. To fix that, you'll have to come to the Show Advanced option, and this allows you to change the direct version of Forge. So it can be the stable version, the latest version, or the other version in which you can select a specific Forge version. However, we don't really need to do that, so we'll stay with stable and hit create. This will download the Forge files and the Minecraft files for you, so you don't have to do anything. Now that it's done, we can click on it and we can click the play button one more time. You can already see that the Forge is actually working here. We've got the little Forge icon. We can see we have two mods loaded. So Forge is working correctly. Now, how do we add mods to this? Well, it's really simple with ModRinth. All you have to do is come to this add content button and that will bring you to this screen. So ModRinth will only show you mods that are uploaded to ModRinth. So not all mods are actually uploaded to ModRinth, but I'll show you how to use CurseForge mod in a little bit. It'll only show you mods that are compatible with the version of loader that you have. So in this case, Forge 1.21.1, all of these mods that it shows are automatically compatible with that version. So we can come down here and we can find some mods that we want to install. For example, Zero's World Minimap. Let's just install that. Uh, let's install just enough items and let's see, let's on the second page here. Uh, let's do better F3. All I'm doing is clicking that install, the green install button, and it automatically adds it to the mod pack. If we hit the back arrow here, we can now see there are mods inside of the pack, but we only clicked install on three mods. Why is there a fourth? So in this case, the cloth config API was a dependency for one of these other mods. ModRinth will automatically attempt to download any of the dependencies for the mods if they're set up correctly by the mod author. Now we can test that real quick by clicking play again. Okay, it says we have six mods loaded. And if we go to mods, we can see there's the world mini map, just enough items and better F3. So now there are a few other things that you can do on this page. The first one is these enable buttons. So upon clicking these, it will disable a mod. This is different from deleting the mod. It's not going to completely remove it from the pack. It's just gonna stop it from loading when you run. So for example, if there's some conflicts between some mods and something is crashing, you can go through here and easily turn things on and off to see what exactly the problem is. If you want to delete the mod or completely remove it from the mod pack, you simply have to click remove project on the mod that you want gone. This will get rid of both the dependency and the mod itself if any dependencies were installed. The other thing that will be useful to you if you're making a mod pack is this folder button over here. When you click this, it opens up an instance folder, which looks something like this, but it's just the instance for the mod pack itself. So here you have your config files, you have access to the mods files, shader packs, saves, etc. And again, you also have logs so you can see what the log file is doing and specific options if you need to change anything here. So the cool thing about ModRinth is it works with mods, but it also works with resource packs, shader packs, and data packs. So if we go back to add content here, we have an option to switch between the data packs, shaders, and resource packs. And here we can just click on any of them to automatically install. For example, Terralith, we now have. If we want the complementary shaders, we can get that one as well. And resource pack, let's just grab, let, let's just grab round trees. Why not? We click back over here to our test folder. We can see it's installed the different items. For the shaders, you can't just download the shaders just like this. This will put it in the shaders packs folder. So this right here, you can see it's been installed, but you still need a mod to actually run the shader itself. In terms of 1.21.1, I'm not sure of a shader mod to actually use for this version. So that's not actually going to do anything when we press run. And so that's it for creating mod packs yourself. As you can see, it's really, really simple. You simply have to search for the mods, whatever you want, and just click download or install on each of them. So that's pretty much it for installing the mods, but there are a few extra things that we can talk about. For one, if you ever want details about something, you can click on it here, and this will pull up essentially the readme or the information about the mod that the mod author has given you. Here you can see useful information, useful links, 
things like that. But the other useful thing about this page is that it gives you access to the versions tab. If you ever find that mods are not the correct version or you just want to try beta versions or go back to a release version, it's as simple as coming to this page and clicking this button here. This will switch the installed version for your mod pack to whichever one you click on. You can also do the same thing with Fabric and NeoForge. So we'll go back to our library, we'll go to Create Profile. All you have to do is click on Fabric here and select your game version. Again, you can show Advanced and you can choose specific Fabric versions if you want, but I'm just gonna stick with the defaults here. And now if you click on Add Content, you can immediately see there's already more mods available for Fabric than there are for Forge including iris shaders and things like that. So you can easily install these different mods just like that. And then when you come back to here, you can run it just as normal. We will do NeoForge 2 just to show it. So we'll do mod rinth NeoForge, click NeoForge, click the correct version, and click create. And just like that, we have a NeoForge instance that's ready to go. So I did say there's multiple ways of creating instances, and this was doing it yourself but you can also install pre-made mod packs. If we go to this browse tab over here, we can sort by mod packs. And here are a bunch of mod packs that have been created by different users. For example, the Cobblemon official mod pack for Fabric is right here. To install this, all you have to do is click install and it downloads all of the instance files, all of the mod files, all the configs, anything you need to play that game. And if we go back to our library, we can see it's now right here ready to go and all we have to do is click play over here you have options to sort so you, if you want a fabric only mod pack you can search by those or if you want a forge only mod pack there you go you can also choose specific versions to sort by or if you want a multiplayer ready lightweight kitchen sink a bunch of different sorting options over here. The final way to create a new mod pack is to import an existing one from a file. But in order to import that file, you first have to create it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can actually, inside of the instance, come up to export mod pack. You can give it a name and you can give it a version number. We'll give it an alternate name and you can give it a description, but you can also come down here to choose what specific files to include in this pack. We haven't run this fabric Minecraft at all. So the only thing here is the mods folder. But if you have ran this, you'll see things like the config folder, the saves folder, that sort of stuff. Right now, just exporting the mods is perfectly fine. So we'll hit export, and then we'll just create a new folder, call it test pack, and export it into that folder. If we look where we saved it, we have the test pack, and inside of it is this .mrpack file. This is all that you need to import a new pack. So you can take this and you can send it to your friends. They're relatively small if you use just Modrinth mods. To import this, we simply go to the create profile, we do from file, and import the MR pack file like this. And now if we go to our library, we should be able to see, now we have two Modrinth fabrics because we just imported one of them. Okay, so we know how to import, export, and create mod packs or download existing mod packs, but there is something else you may want to do, and that is use CurseForge mods. If you don't know, CurseForge is a separate modding platform that came before Modrinth. Because they're separate, that means that any authors on CurseForge would need to re-upload their mods to Modrinth. And in some cases, that just doesn't happen. For example, Mine Colonies. If we search here, it does not show up. However, if we look at the CurseForge page, we do see it has a version for 1.21.1, which is the version of the pack that we're trying to make here. So does that mean you can't use Mine Colonies? No. All you have to do is come to the versions or the files over here and find the file that you want from CurseForge. In this case, we're going to use this beta mine colonies for 1.21.1 NeoForge. So if we click on that, we can just click download and that will download the mine colonies pack mod here. Now we need to go back to the Modrinth NeoForge and open up the folder and we go into the mods folder. Right now it's empty because we haven't put anything there. But all I'm going to do is drag and drop the downloaded Mine Colonies jar into this file. And you can see now Mine Colonies shows up as a mod that we can turn on and off. It doesn't, it doesn't let you click on it and it doesn't have an information page because it is an external mod. But this shows that you can just easily add in any CurseForge mod that you want into a Modrinth pack. Simple as that. This also does work with the exporting of the mod pack too. The only caveat being the file size for the MR pack is going to be a lot bigger. So here we have the Modrinth NeoForge. You can see it's now 64 megabytes instead of just two kilobytes. 
The reason for that is since Modrinth does not have a localized copy of the mine colonies, it can't just store the link to it like it would in this pack. Instead, it's actually packing the mod with the MR pack. And now there's one last final thing I would like to go over, and that is down here in the settings. If we scroll down in the settings page, we will find a Java memory slider. So this is how much RAM you're allocating to Java to run Minecraft. If you find that your Minecraft is lagging, or it seems that it can't handle the mod pack, the first thing would be to come down to this Java memory slider and making sure it's set to an adequate value. So I have a sort of beefier computer, um, so I have 12 gigabytes of RAM associated to Minecraft at all times. You can increase that or decrease that depending on your needs, but for regular vanilla Minecraft, it's about four gigabytes is plenty. I think you can even get away with two gigabytes. But if you're using some bigger mod packs, that goes up to six gigabytes or eight gigabytes, just depending on what you're doing. But with that, that's pretty much all there is to ModRinth. It's really easy to install or create new mod packs, especially with the dependency management that it does automatically. If this helped you at all, I encourage you to subscribe and like because it is free and it just makes me happy. So until next time.